Uh, thank you, and thanks a lot to the organizers for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here at uh, ICTS in, uh, in Bangalore. Uh, I'd like to speak about purity, and especially purity for flat cohomology. And uh, let me begin by just explaining briefly what purity is about, what purity phenomena capture in, in algebraic geometry. Roughly speaking, purity is about insensitivity to of various invariants of, say, schemes to removing closed subschemes. For instance, uh, Hartog's extension principle in, com in several complex variables is already a statement of the sort that uh, complex functions extend past uh, sufficiently, analytic functions extend past sufficiently uh, small uh, sets. Uh, now, uh, in, in algebraic geometry, perhaps uh, one of the most well-known Purity results is purity of uh, Zareski Nagata. Uh, let me state it precisely. If one has a regular uh, scheme X, which which means uh, well, it's a local Noetherian scheme such that its local rings are regular uh, regular local rings, uh, and a closed subscheme Z of the X of co-dimension at least two meaning that the dimension of the local rings of X at the points in Z are, are, at, least, are at least two, then the Sariski Nagata purity says that the uh, category of finite et al. covers of X, or simply finite et al. X schemes, not necessarily covers if X is not connected, uh, f the category of finite et al. X schemes is equivalent via pullback to the category of finite et al. schemes uh, over the open of X uh, obtained by removing by removing this, uh, this Z. Okay, so if one has a, uh, so par particular X could be like a regular local ring of dimension at least two, and Z could be a close point. Removing the close point does not affect the et al. fundamental group is, is an implication of this. So as I mentioned, this, uh, this goes under the name of Zeriski Nagata uh, purity, and in this somehow, perhaps like a more general form, is due to Grotendieck, uh, and this uh, in SJ2. Okay, uh, another, another purity phenomenon of, 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 of this spirit, where one has a regular scheme and a closed subscheme of codimension at, at least two, is, uh, is a so called uh, purity for the Brouwer group, which says precisely that if uh, one has, uh, if one considers the atal cohomology of X, with coefficients in a, in, a, in a multiplicative group, then this, this atal cohomology does not change if we remove, if we remove the, closed, uh, the closed Z. Okay, so this was uh, conjectured by, by Grotendieck in, in uh, 68, and uh, earlier versions by Auslander Goldman, and proved in many cases by, by Gaber. Uh, who well studied to, uh, over over the years, and several, there were some remaining cases uh, in in mixed characteristic that were particularly stubborn, and those fell to to the to, to perfecto techniques uh, to that that turned to apply uh, to such questions. Somehow, even though even though this this type of purity question is is purely al al algebraic geometry and a priori has nothing to do with perfectoids. Nonetheless, these groups, these groups are torsion and, and somehow one studies them prime by prime. And that the primes which are not invertible on a scheme, uh, turns out that passing to some largely ramified covers of these local rings at these, at these missing primes of positive residue characteristics is very beneficial to understanding these types of phenomena. And uh, my talk is very much about, about this. So uh, to to, to put in, in perspective of what's to come, let me just reformulate this, this uh, isomorphism of a tal cohomology groups. And in fact, let me give a slightly sharper version, which says that the similar map on H3 is, 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 is also injective. So really what is going on here is the vanishing of the tal cohomology of supports of X with supports in Z and coefficients in GM in low cohomological degrees. So in this case, for incomological degrees less than less than four, which happens to be twice the codimension. Well, uh, okay, so less less than four. So because uh, well, this kind of pullback to, to an open, its its kernel is controlled by some image of H two with supports, and its co-kernel is 
lands in H3 we support. So certainly if we have this vanishing, then, then we're good. And it's this vanishing that's really behind. And now for this, for, for this vanishing, there's of course formalism of somehow local to global uh, at our homology with, uh, with support. So it's really becomes a local statement. We can localize on X at the missing points and uh, assume that X is a regular lo lo local ring. And so it's in that local setting that uh, that the subsequent discussion will take place. It's a, it's a key it's a key setting. Now, uh, for for the primes that are invertible, that are invertible on X, this this purity for the Brouwer group is a special case of a much more general uh, so-called absolute cohomological purity that was conjectured by Grothendieck as well for a tau cohomology, and this was proved by Gaber in '94. Uh, the proof appeared uh, in Proceedings of As Asumino Conference in, well, Proceedings appeared in, in 2002, written by uh, Fujiwara. And Gaber's method uh, builds on the ideas of Thomason, who used uh, algebraic K theory, uh, well, who somehow used algebraic K theoretic approach to, to this kind of question. So what, what, does this, what does this absolute cohomological purity conjecture of Grothendieck say? Uh, if one has a regular local ring, R with the maximal ideal M and an int integer N that is invertible in R. So well, perhaps just a prime, which is inver okay, invertible, invertible in R. Then the et al cohomology of the ring R with supports in the maximal ideal and, and with Z mod N coefficients vanishes in cohomological degrees less than Twice the dimension, twice the dimension of the ring. It's it's the same it's the same kind of phenomenon, except I mean not only low cohomological degrees, but really it's it's a, it's a tight bound, and then there's a global consequence that if you want to extend the tau cohomology classes, uh, valued in locally constant sheaves with uh, of order invertible on a scheme, then uh, I mean as long as your closed subscheme is of sufficient large co-dimension, you can do that. Uh, uniquely, there's a global consequence uh, like so, and it's this it's this purity for a tal cohomology that that we that we aim uh, to uh, to generalize. So uh, uh, the main result that I'd like to re to report on is uh, joined with uh, Peter Schulze, and we extend this purity for for a tal cohomology to the case to the case of uh, flat cohomology, to the case, in particular, to the case where the integer n need not be, need no longer be invertible in the ring R. But in fact, the statement, uh, the statement is, is more general, so let me, uh, let me give it. Uh, if one has a regular, or more generally, a local complete intersection, local ring, R with maximal ideal M. So saying that the ring, well, uh, one can really just restrict to regular case. The statement is already interesting in that case, but uh, somehow for the proofs, it's important to, uh, to allow that R be a complete intersection. And uh, saying that uh, an Euterian local ring is a complete intersection just means that its completion is a quotient of a regular ring by a regular sequence. So the ring itself need not be of this form a priori, and uh, okay, but the completion is. So that's, that's, that's okay, that's what the assumption is. And, uh, and a commutative finite flat R group scheme G in the setting, the flat cohomology of the ring R and supports in the maximal ideal, just as in Gaber's theorem, now with coefficients in G, G for instance could be constant, but of order not necessarily invertible in the ring, uh, vanishes in cohomological degrees less than the dimension of the ring. Okay, so, uh, all right, so let me mention right away that, uh, of course, this, uh, this gives uh, the uh, corresponding global statement. So if we somehow have a global setting, like in the purity for the Brouwer group, then we, we we're getting uh, that if, if we have scheme X with singularities are local complete intersections and some closed subscheme, and we want to extend uh, cohomology classes over that closed subscheme from, from the open, 
cohomology valued, flat cohomology valued in this, in this finite locally free finite flat group scheme, then this is uh, bijective uh, for i less than the co-dimension minus one. And the minus one comes from that we also need to control the co-kernel, which is cohomology with supports in, de in with a degree i plus one. Okay, now uh, one, one evident immediate difference from from the et al case is that there the bound was twice a dimension. Uh, here we get vanishing only for i less than dimension. And there are in fact, okay, so there are two reasons for that. Uh, but th this is sharp, but uh, so why don't we get twice a dimension? Firstly, we're not assuming that the ring is regular. It's only a complete intersection. So even if g is et al of order invertible in the ring, we would still, I mean, this is somehow, not precisely that, and we would still only get vanishing up to a dimension because the ring is singular. And secondly, uh, if we, if G is no longer, if G is like Z mod P, where P is the residue characteristic of R, and imagine that R is a positive characteristic, then by our Art and Schreier sequence, this kind of local cohomology group would relate to HI with cohomology in, in, in co with coefficients in the structure sheaf, and so this vanishing would be governed by the depth of the, of the local ring. And the depth of an Euterian local ring is, of course, uh, bounded above by a dimension. So certainly we cannot hope for any twice a dimension uh, bounds in here. It's really, uh, okay, so, uh, all right. Now, b b before, uh, before proceeding, let me, uh, let me mention a concrete, concrete consequence of this of this general result. Well, so firstly, we get, we recover this purity for, for the Brouwer group, and even in the case when X is only a local complete intersection, not necessarily regular, but in that case, we need to assume co-dimension at least four rather than, rather than, rather than at least two, really related to that different uh, d dimension bound. And in fact, it's this, okay, so this consequence for the purity for a Brouwer group in the complete intersection case was a conjecture of Gaber, and it was this conjecture that somehow guided us to looking for, for what is really going on in, in here. Uh, granted that uh, there seemed to be an opening uh, using uh, perfectoid, uh, Perfectors in, in these problems, as, as we'll discuss. Now, the, another concrete consequence of this is, is another conjecture of Gaber. Uh, who predicted that if one has a local complete intersection, uh, R with maximal ideal M of dimension of dimension at least three, or dimension equals three is the most interesting case actually, then the, the car group of the puncture spectrum of, of R, of the spectrum of R minus the maximal ideal, uh, has no non-trivial torsion. So all, tor all, all line bundles of finite order on a puncture spectrum of a local complete intersection or local ring of dimension at least three vanish. And this roughly is uh, the i equals two and the g equals mu, mu p case of this, of, of, of this main, main theorem. And just, just to put this result in perspective, let me recall a result uh, from, let me recall the Groton de Klefschetz theorem uh, settled in SGA2, which, which says that this kind of Picard group of the puncture spectrum of a local complete intersection even without the torsion restriction vanishes if the dimension is at least, if the dimension is at least four. Okay, so the vanishing of the, of, of, of line, the triviality of line bundles on the puncture spectrum of complete intersections with dimension at least four is a result of, is, is a result of Grotendieck. And this, uh, this, fr from this, from this theorem, we get the refinement in, in dimension three. It was, it was conjectured by Gaber, and in fact, this, this, this statement is somehow the first statement where one really, I mean, I don't know a proof of this uh, in a general case that wouldn't pass through some of the ideas that I will discuss for, for, getting, for, getting, for getting this here. So already this case seems to, seems to capture uh, something perfected about them. Okay, and uh, now I'd, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to discuss uh, what, what goes into this, is into this theorem. And in fact, I'd like to begin by, 
by discussing a, a new proof for, for this theorem, for, for the theorem of Gabbard Thomason of, of purity for, for a tal cohomology. Because the, the ideas that uh, permit the proof of the flat cohomology case also allow one to prove the Gabbard Thomason theorem, and in fact, that proof seems uh, simpler at least than the one using k, k theory. Okay, so. Uh, All right, so uh, what, what do we want if, well, we have a regular local ring, R with maximal ideal M, and this integer, positive integer N, which is invertible in R. And we would like to show that the cohomology which supports the maximal ideal at all cohomology in degrees less than twice the dimension of the of the ring, uh, with with coefficients in C mod n, vanishes. That's that's the, that's the statement of Grothendieck's absolute uh, cohomological purity. Uh, and so, okay, so we'll we'll sketch a new new proof for this. And 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 the idea is. Uh, is to use tilting is to use tilting for the atal cohomology of perfectoid rings. I mean, once one reduces this problem to perfectoid somehow, uh, to reduce to to reduce the problem to positive characteristic. Now. Okay, so like, why is, uh, firstly, why is the equi-characteristic case of this, of this conjecture easier? Well, if in equi-characteristic, the completion of a, of a regular local ring, which contains a field, is just a, is just a power series ring over the rest, well, over the rest of the field in the, so many variables. And so uh, this case, in this case, the Grothendieck's absolute cohomological purity, this statement uh, was settled already in SJ4. I mean, basically because of, of some general result about comparison, about passage to completion, uh, when, when one is studying such low, such atal cohomology with, with supports, one can always replace R by R hat here. And then once R is R hat, then it's just the completion of the affine space at the origin. And surely one, I mean, one should know how to deal with that case before proceeding further. And, and Michael Arton explained this case in detail in SJ4, and we'll reduce that case using, uh, using tilting for, uh, for perfectoid, for perfectoid rings. In fact, uh, I'll, Well, so, I mean, tilting for perfectoids is a priori in somehow analytic setting in addict spaces and so on. Uh, so there's, there's some massaging that we need to go in if, we, if, we'd, like to, if we'd like to apply uh, that, that theory here. But in fact, let me, let me use this opportunity to sketch a, to sketch a new proof for, for, for the tilting for a tal cohomology of perfectoids, in fact, of an algebraic version of, 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 of such tilting that will not use Addict spaces, but instead, uh, okay, well, we'll see. So, uh, okay, and uh, then this uh, this purity will, will will follow. Now, let me uh, begin with this by recalling uh, what what a perfectoid uh, ring is. And uh, in, okay, so I'll use a definition which is more general than what uh, I believe was discussed uh, last week. So such rings are sometimes called integral perfectoid. So. Uh, a ring A is perfectoid if it is of the form the p-typical Witt vectors of a perfect FP algebra modulo some principal ideal generated by an element xi. Uh, so here, this B is a perfect FP algebra. And uh, C is a, uh, is, uh, well, in the vector coordinates is some element of this of this vector of 
typical width vector, so D, satisfying the following, satisfying the following conditions, the, the algebra B is supposed to be C0 adequately complete. And the, the first width coordinate, Xi1, uh, should be a unit. And that's it. So, so uh, a perfect wet ring is simply a quotient of a width vector, so a perfect uh, C0 adequately complete FP algebra by, by a principal ideal whose first width vector coordinate is that same Xi0, and the, sec well, and the second one is, is, is a unit. Uh, all right, and so uh, let me just mention a couple of examples. Uh, so, of, of course, uh, any, any perfect FP algebra is perfectoid because one can simply take uh, Xi zero equal, I mean, Xi could be P for instance, so we can recover our own, our own B back and that will be, that will be perfectoid. In fact, an FP algebra is perfectoid if and only if it's perfect, but I haven't mentioned enough to, to explain that in, in detail. For another, perhaps more interesting uh, example is a ring like highly ramified extension of some regular local ring namely a ring of, of this form. Where afterwards one uh, takes periodic, uh, periodic completion. Uh, so one starts with some regular, one starts with some regular local ring such as ZP and then power series variables X1 up to XD. And one takes out P, P power roots of the, of the system of parameters given by P and those variables, periodically completes the, the limit and that's, that ring is perfectoid because one can write down the, an explicit B that gives, that gives rise to it or in fact uh, after the fact there are also equivalent characterizations of perfectoids with which maybe it's perhaps more, more evident that it's really perfect. Okay, so uh, now let me just give, give some facts about perfected rings. These are not, not difficult to prove, but uh, I'll, 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 simply, I'll simply use them without, without proving. Now, from, from this definition, it actually follows that A is periodically complete. Basically because, uh, because B being psi zero adequately complete, uh, the width vector says p comma xi zero adequately, well, p comma Teichmiller of xi zero adequately complete, and then one shows that this that this uh, assumption that xi one be a unit ensures that this ideal generated by xi is a closed ideal, so the quotient is still uh, is still periodically periodically complete. Uh, okay, so uh, now the the ring B that appears in the definition is in fact determined by by a. This, this is nothing, nothing else than the tilt of A, which, which by definition is just the inverse limit perfection of uh, A modulo P. Okay, so this, uh, this is not, not, not so much, well, okay, so B is, B is, B is determined by A, and then, uh, And in fact, okay, so uh, th this, 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 this inverse perfection of, uh, of A it receives a map from the similar inverse limit uh, over P power maps of, of A itself. And, and just the reduction mod modulo P map. And this map is an isomorphism of multiplicative monoids. It's a basic fact that, uh, that, that uh, that one knows, what one knows about perfectoids. So in particular, uh, okay. Um, and and the, the width vectoring of B or the width vectors of, uh, of the tilt of A equivalently is uh, something that, that is usually denoted or sometimes noted by, by A in for A. It's a Fontaine's period ring A inf applied to A. Oh, anyway, it's just notation. So the uh, okay, so perfectoid is then A inf of its tilt modulo this modulo modulo this psi, and uh, the psi itself uh, is a non-zero divisor. In in A inf. 
So if one takes uh, a inf and mod and and divides it by p, one recovers the tilt. And if one divides xi, which is another non-zero divisor, one one recovers the perfectoid that that one is interested in. And getting back to our subject of regular local rings and somehow uh, the the relation with perfectoids is. Uh, Captured by the following by the following fact that every regular uh, local ring uh, has a has a faithfully flat cover by a perfectoid. In fact, it's an if and only if if, if a Noetherian local ring admits a faithfully flat cover by a perfectoid, it needs to be regular. A recent result of uh, uh, Batma and uh, and others. And uh, so, okay, so. Uh, there, there exists a faithfully flat map from R to R infinity, uh, with uh, R infinity being uh, perfectoid. And how, how does this go, really? I mean, we kind of seen an example of this already. If we had the ZP with these power series variables, and we adjoined the P power roots of the variables, and P adequately completed, and that's a cover. And in general, it actually goes pretty much the same way because the the completion with respect to maximal yield, well, I mean, of course, uh, this R is assumed of, uh, of, residue character of positive residue characteristic. Okay, so uh, the completion of, of, a, of a regular local ring of positive residue characteristic is again a regular local ring of such sort, and by the Cohen structure theorem, it's a quotient of a power series uh, ring over over a coin ring by a single equation of the form p minus minus f where f is in the maximal ideal of this of this regular local ring so here w is a is a coin ring it's a mixed characteristic mixed characteristic zero p discrete valuation ring complete discrete valuation ring X1 up to XD are some, some variables, P minus F, and then F is in the maximal ideal of this. Okay, it's, in a, it's an ideal span by P and then, the, and then the variables. All right, and so uh, one has this, this R hat, and what is the R, R infinity then? R infinity is simply the same ring where one replaces the XIs by their compatible systems of P power roots. So it's a huge extension of the original R hat. Uh, and one mods out by p, p minus p minus f p minus f again, and that's that's just a perfected cover of our, of our R because our hat is a certain faithful flat cover of R, and then our R infinity is even in uh, five locally three over 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 our R. Uh, all right, and so let me just su sum up this this discussion by by saying that if we have if we have our perfectoid A and we get a multiplicative map from A flat back to A, which simply is the map that takes that takes an A in this A flat and uh, sends it to the reduction of the Teichmüller of A, or equivalently, equivalently. Under this uh, identification of multiplicative monoids, if we have a compatible sequence of, of com p power compatible sequence a flat viewed as viewed as viewed as that of elements of, of a, then we can just map it to the first entry of that sequence. That's the same as as that uh, bar of Teichmüller. Okay, so we have this we have this map which is multiplicative but certainly not additive because it's of positive characteristic and this is probably of mixed characteristic. Uh, nonetheless. Uh, we get that this map induces, if we, module, if we mod out some ideal, namely just the ideal generated by P in, in, in A, and the ideal generated by some P flat in A flat, where, where P flat is a compatible system of P power roots of some unit multiple of P,
A basic fact about perfect nodes is that some unit multiple of P does admit such compatible system of P power roots, and then this element P flat can be regarded, I mean, it depends on that choice of that unit, but anyway, we abuse notation and just don't buy P flat because the ideal generates doesn't depend on the unit. And so uh, that, uh, that element P flat is really an element of the tilt, and we have this map, and this map is, is, is an isomorphism. So we have a map, well, multiplicative map, which is an isomorphism modulo these modulo these principal ideals, and these and these rings are like Henselian along, along P flat, even complete, and uh, al along P. And in this kind of setting in, in algebraic geometry, there are approximation and al algebraization theorems, saying roughly, for instance, that the atal homology of some open of, of A flat that contains the locus where, where pi flat is, is non unit cor corresponds with atal homology of corresponding thing over A. And so, somehow guided by that intuition of this approximation and algebraization, we can just pose ourselves a question whether that same statement, whether could it perhaps hold in this, in this, in this, in this, in this setting? Could it be that somehow our perfectoid A and this map from its tilt back to the perfectoid is somehow just a map towards the completion perhaps in some, well, I mean, certainly it doesn't make sense literally, but, but we can, we can contemplate the consequences that, that this, uh, that this could give, and the algebraic version of tilting for a tal homology is precisely is precisely that. So the statement uh, the, the, the precise statement is 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 the following. So we have a perfect ring A just as we've been discussing all along. And we have, uh, we consider an open, an open U of spec of A, perhaps it's just spec of A itself, and, uh, or, but it's required to contain the locus where P, where P does not vanish. So, okay, so some open sandwich between, between these two. Uh, and such an open certainly has a corresponding open on the tilt because the open is characterized by the complementary closed subscheme and the complementary closed subscheme is a closed subscheme of A mod P. So it corresponds to a closed subscheme of A flat mod P flat. So we can, we can consider a corresponding open U flat for, for, for the tilt. And it will contain the locus where uh, pi flat does not does not vanish. Okay, so we have these two opens which somehow match under that un, un, under that map. And so in this setting, we have the statement is that we have the following natural identifications. F firstly, the atal homology that we're interested in of this U. With coefficients, uh, with constant coefficients, uh, is the same, canonically the same, as a tau homology of U flat with th those same constant coefficients. And now n is uh, any, any positive integer, invertible or not, doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so we have this identification of a tau homology, and well, we also have, I mean, there are other invariants of, of rings that are somehow amenable to this approximation and algebraization business. And, and so one such invariant is just a functor of idempotence. I mean, perhaps we don't really care about this, but let's just mention that the, that the, that the functor of idempotence uh, is also gets canonically identified for U and U flat. In other words, uh, the, the ways to decompose U into open and closed, uh, complementary closed open subschemes, is the same as the ways to decompose U flat into such. Sorry? No, no, need not be. And it's just any, uh, any positive integer. Okay, so now uh, let's catch a proof of this. And the reason why I stated this, this, uh, this version with idempotence, which is in fact much more elementary, is because we'll use this to prove the statement about about the tau homology, so let's see how the how the proof goes roughly.
Okay, and so let's uh, start uh, from, from this statement about idempotence. I mean, let me just uh, convince you that it's true without really proving it rigorously for an arbitrary u. So we have this, we have this uh, bijection of multiplicative monoids of, uh, and, uh, I mean, of a flat and this inverse system of compatible systems of p, power, p powers in, in A. Let's call this bijection star. And so certainly under this bijection, idempotence in, in A flat correspond to idempotence in, in A because, I mean, there's not really so much that's going on for an idempotent one raised to p power, it's just, it's just it, itself. So certainly at least when u is spec of A or spec of A flat, it just follows from this. And if u is on the other extreme, if u is, if you invert p and invert p flat, at least if those are non-zero divisors, then again you get such a bijection just by somehow inverting those two on, on, on both sides. So that case is also okay, at least in the non-zero divisor case. And if, it, if p is a zero divisor, then one can decompose a perfectoid and somehow canonically into where p is zero and p is non-zero divisor. And somehow from that, and so this epsilon, this, this kind of decomposition, uh, if p is a zero divisor in a, we get the, we get the claim. I mean, of course, for general u, one should like work as uh, a risky locally on, on U or perhaps, I mean, uh, or hands allies along. Uh, it, it's just a matter of technique to, of getting the, the general U from, from, these, from these two cases because uh, somehow the statement glues and so on and so on. Okay, so the item point case is really not that, not that difficult. And now how are we going to get that alcomology? Well, we're, we're, going, to use, uh, we're going to use arc descent uh, for, for a alcomology to basically reduce to, uh, to a much more favorable case. So let me recall. Let me recall the uh, p complete arc topology introduced uh, by Bat, Bat and Matthew. Well, okay, so they, they in fact, they proved uh, well, strong descent, descent properties for, for a tau homology. Particularly proved uh, to complete arc descent for, for a tau homology. Now, what does that what does that mean really? What uh, what is what is a map of, of rings? Say R goes well. Let's just do B maybe. Uh, B goes to B prime is a p complete arc cover. If the following if the following condition holds, if for every map uh, from B to evaluation ring V V is a Evaluation ring of rank of rank at most one, and since we're doing this p-complete version of the arc topology, I'll, I'll assume that my evaluation ring is p-adically complete. So for any this little little arc in spec B, given by the spec V mapping to spec B, V being a p-adically complete evaluation ring of rank at most one, there exists a way to fill this diagram. To v prime, where v prime is another periodically complete valuation ring uh, of rank at most one, with this map being faithfully flat, or in other words, an extension of an extension of of, of valuation rings. So it's okay. So that if if a, if a map satisfies this this kind of lifting, I mean, this kind of property, then it's called the p complete arc cover. And the point is that the, these form a these form a topology, which is a very weak topology. For instance, any faithfully flat map satisfies this. Uh, this, this kind of condition. So it, it is, uh, in particular, p-complete R cover. And for such maps, uh, th there is a result that, that one can descend a tau homology along such maps. One can compute a tau homology of B, for instance, or even after inverting P, from the tau homology of B prime and on the check nerve of the cover somehow, on the, I mean, in the right sense. Uh, okay, and so we'll, we'll use that. So now, uh, okay, so then we use this. We use this to replace our, our A, our perfectoid A that we're interested in, by a large cover, by, by a huge product of, of evaluation rings like that. Basically, for every way to map, to map A into a evaluation ring, which is periodically complete of rank less or equal to one, blah, 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 we choose a representative of, of that, roughly, roughly speaking, in a way that there are no set theoretic problems. And so, by, by doing that, we, we reduce to, to the case where A is a product of, of evaluation rings. Uh, 
Well, so this the eyes uh, is a periodically complete evaluation ring of rank at most one and with algebraically closed fraction field. One can always so this uh, this this topology admits a base of of, of this form, and so uh, in in this case, uh, then a flat is just a corresponding product of the tilts of these evaluation rings. I mean, certainly because of the assumption on the fraction field, all the vi's are perfectoid, and I mean one just sees that the tilt is tilt is that, and we reduce to this case. A is A is an infinite product of evaluation rings. A flat is A flat is its tilt. And so now we're just going to see directly that uh, that the Atal homology is good. Because, for instance, now if, if U is just spec A, then certainly there's no non-trivial Atal homology because any such, I mean, no such, such a, such a, such a ring has no non-trivial Atal covers because None of the VI has an atal cover, and so, I mean, uh, and for, for, by, by using that, we okay. So, like in, in general, U is not necessarily spec A, but but we know how local rings of such of such products of evaluation rings look like. They are just localizations of ultra products of corresponding collection of evaluation rings, and these still are uh, evaluation rings with algebraically closed uh, fraction field. So, anyway, in short, uh, U and U flat then have no non-split at all covers in this case. And so what, what we get from that is that the at all homology of U with Z mod N coefficients, well, it's just H0 with Z mod N coefficients. And this is just, uh, just Z mod N valued functions on uh, uh, on 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 the compositions of U into clopens. I mean, it's a constant shift. So, so to to give H zero is to decompose the to decompose the base on what the value is, and then uh, that's that's value. And okay, so now for the for the tilt, it's the same thing, but on U flat. Blah, 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 all the same except u flat in, instead of u. And now certainly decompositions into clopens, they're just governed by this idempotence. I mean, the way you decompose the identity idempotent to the sum of idempotence, that, that's, that corresponds to this decomposition. And then the mod n, you, you just match. And, and it's all functorial. And uh, then you, OK, then you, then you descend. And then it's all, I mean, it's all good in, 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 in this way. So for, from this, OK, so somehow the, the idea is to use this to use this strong descent property for a tau homology to reduce to, to a case where it just follows from the from the idempotent idempotent case. Uh, all right, and so maybe let me mention before before proceeding that uh, th this version of, of tilting is uh, is somehow weaker than I mean in the in the analytic setting one doesn't only have the the isomorphism of a tau homologies one has really equivalence of a tau sites which is. Which is a which is a stronger statement, but improving that isomorphism of 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 sites, uh, I mean such approximation statements that we're playing with are really used. For instance, to pass to to a stock, and then after completion, the tau homology doesn't change, so on and so on. Uh, so it's uh, I mean it's in some sense in similar flavor, except perhaps you know, slightly easier to prove. Uh, well, anyway, it's a weaker statement. Uh, okay, but uh, but the statement will will suffice uh, for us to to prove the Gabbard Gabbard Thomason theorem. In fact, so let let us see how it follows. Because if we have our regular local ring R with maximal ideal M, and we're considering Z mod N, where N is now invertible in R, then then we get an injection of this into that perfected cover. I mean, we can consider a perfected cover R infinity that I mentioned that always exists for a, for a, 
for a regular local ring. And this map is injected because we can, we can pass first the completion of, of R and then, and then use, use trace maps somehow in, in tau homology using, using the fact that R infinity is somehow built from finite flat covers of, of order power of P and the N is prime to P, then we use, using the trace maps, we can reduce to, to showing that this vanishes in, in homological degrees. And now, by using the by using the algebraic tilting, by applying it to spec R infinity and also to, to the puncture spectrum of, of R infinity, then we get that this that this atal homology is nothing else than the same homology for for the for the tilt of of of, of R infinity. Okay, so that's by by this by this algebraic tilting, and uh, okay, so so now th this. This fellow, the, the tilt, this is just some completion of, of, uh, of the power series ring in, uh, in so many variables because we, we, we've seen what uh, our infinity looks explicitly. And then if we, if we look at that presentation and, I, and identify a tilt based on it, which we see that our infinite tilt is just a, a fadic somehow completion of, of this power series ring. And so we, we reduce, then, I mean, we can get rid of these p powers because they don't have any influence on, on, on the tau homology, and so then we reduce the result of Michael Artin. So this vanishes for i less than uh, twice the dimension of r by, by the equi characteristic case. Because our tilt is basically just a perfection of the, comp of the completion of the affine space at, at the origin. Of, and this affine space of the same dimension as, as the original ring. So that's 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 uh, that's it really as far as the Gaber Thomason theorem is is concerned. And let let me then uh, proceed to to discussing how I mean. Okay, so this was somehow the Atal case, and we're interested really in flat homology. So let's see what uh, what uh, what we'll do in a flat in a flat homology case how the proof, what's the structure of the proof? Well, roughly speaking, it, the, st the structure is similar, but s certain parts of this argument will be, will be more difficult. For instance, passage to the tower, and, and then here we'll need to do something else because we can't just, I mean, this will be a G, not a Z mod N, will be some five flat group scheme, so certainly, okay, so. Uh, all right, but nonetheless, let's proceed to discussing uh, then purity for, for flat homology. One, one point that's really common to both, to both cases is that we'll again use a P complete arc descent to, to somehow deal with a, deal with a, deal with perfected cases, uh, as I'll sketch. So, okay, so, uh, what, what do we, what do we want now? So, now we have a local complete intersection, Euterian local ring R with maximal ideal M. Uh, and we have a finite flat R group, uh, commutative R group scheme, uh, G. Okay, and in the, in the setting, what we want is that the flat cohomology, which supports the maximal ideal of R with coefficients in G, vanish uh, in cohomological degrees less than the dimension of, of the ring. Okay, and we'll again reduce to perfectoids. Now, the reduction is, uh, is significantly more subtle, but I will not really go, go into it because I want to focus on the part of the perfectoid argument which is closer to what I've been discussing. Let me just mention what, what goes into reduction to perfectoids. First, we use the gabbard thomason theorem, which we just approved, Basically, because we want to get rid of the cases where G is of, of order prime to the prime to the residue characteristic of R. We really want to reduce the G of P power order. And anyway, it's Gabbard Thomason plus something else, plus little epsilon because R is no longer regular, but, but anyway. Now, uh, the fact that R is only a complete intersection and not a regular ring means that R infinity will not, I mean, we'll not be able to find a flat R infinity over our original R. And to somehow come around this problem, we will need to use Andres Lemo, which says that if we have a perfectoid and a sequence of elements, such as these elements that uh, cut out our original ring R inside the, inside the regular local ring, and after a flat cover of this perfectoid, the sequence admits compatible p-power roots. 
Uh, it's a statement of the sort. And anyway, so some version of Andreas Lemma helps us reduce to, to this, helps us get rid of around this problem. It's only a complete intersection, but uh, anyway, maybe we just care about regular rings to begin with. So, okay, so uh, then we, anyway, that argument also uses deformation theory. And so uh, we, use, using all this, one reduces eventually to the following to the following purely perfected statement. So, so this this commutative algebra gets gets reduced to, to the following. If we have a perfectoid uh, ring A, and a closed subscheme Z in uh, A mod P, well, it's very much like. Okay, so the complement is an open U, like like was there, but okay, a closed subscheme Z such that uh, such that there is an A regular sequence such that A has enough depth along the Z. There is an A regular sequence A1 up to A D in 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 A that vanishes on Z. Okay, this is just the depth assumption. Then, in this in the setting, what we want is a vanishing of flat cohomology with supports in, in Z uh, and coefficients in G in cohomological degrees less than the less than this less than this depth bound uh, for for every for every commutative uh, finite locally free. Now the ring is not necessarily notarian, so we'll say locally free instead of five flat. Uh, uh, a group scheme G of P power order. Okay, so somehow by this by this piece of the argument that I didn't really explain, the original the original problem reduces to this perfected problem, and it's this that will that will that we'll discuss. For example, if, if G was, well, we're assume, we're, for instance, if G was just Z mod P, then we could apply that algebraic tilting to replace this cohomology with supports with a corresponding cohomology with supports for, for the tilt. And one can show that the depth is kind of preserved under that, and so one can really use that algebraic tilting to, to, to settle the G equals Z mod P case of this. But, uh, I mean, in general, we really need to use flat cohomology and and anyway, there's no there's no somehow G flat on, on A flat that we that we'd be dealing with, so we really need to uh, do something else. And what we do is uh, is we we prove somehow we prove an explicit formula for this in some sense, and that formula depends depends on classification results of finite locally free group schemes of 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 of, of this type, and this classification is due to uh, Eichelau and and uh, Peter Scholze, and uh, uh, there is also there's also a recent uh, work of Johannes Anschutz uh, with uh, Arthur Cesar Lebrun, uh, who give a prismatic interpretation to, 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 to the equivalence, which is which is useful. So uh, these these results say that there is an equivalence of categories between. Between G over A, these finite locally free commutative of P power order group schemes over over perfectoid A, uh, as in the theorem, they are classified by their diodonia modules, by their prismatic diodonia modules, which are finitely presented P power torsion killed by power of P, uh, uh, A inf of A modules. M of uh, um, of projective dimension at most one. I mean, if we're classifying p-divisible groups, this will be just projective. But now we're classifying finite locally free group schemes of uh, p-power order commutative, so it's a projective dimension at most one. And so uh, the, these these modules uh, are equipped with uh, Frobenius linear. Frobenius linear, well, I mean, semilinear maybe is a better way to say it, but okay, so F uh, and Frobenius inverse lin semilinear uh, Verschiebung uh, 
satisfying the identities that uh, f after v is, is the multiplication by the Frobenius uh, image of, of the xi, of the generator xi of the current, well, of that xi that appeared in the presentation of, uh, sorry, there's no whole time. Uh, all right, so uh, the, to give a finite locally free group scheme like that is just to give uh, this uh, a inf module, which is finitely presented, be power torsion or projective dimension at most one equipped with semilinear operators satisfying these identities. For instance, if, if A was just a perfect FP algebra, then Xi would just be P, and this would be just really the classification of, uh, of finite locally free group scheme, say, over, over an algebraic closed field of, of positive characteristic by, by the Diodonia modules. This is generalization of that in terms, I mean, that works in mixed characteristic. The functor that is noted by G goes to M of G. And in fact, there are two such functors because we can consider the version where, where it's a covariant or contra, contravariant. And if we consider a contravariant version, then it's just text one in the prismatic side of, of A, of, of G against the prismatic structure here. Okay, anyway, that's, that's an expressed formula, but you know, it's useful for a proof, but not really for, for, this, for stating the, the following, which is really the key formula that we, that we prove in, to, settle, to, settle this, to settle this theorem. So, so the formula is, for, is, is a formula for the flat homology of A with supports in the Z and coefficients in G in terms of this, in terms of this uh, Diotonia module, prismatic Diotonia module, M of G. So we, we have natural identification like so uh, of cohomology of A inf with coefficients in, in, in the prismatic Diodonia module of, of the M and then uh, Fershibung invariance in, in, uh, in the derived sense. And uh, okay, and I'm using, co I'm using covariant version because I want this, I mean, this is covariant in G, so this should also be covariant in G. Okay, so it's really, it's this key formula that one needs, that one needs to show. But now, one, once, this for, once this formula is there, the key point is that C is a non-zero divisor. So the, the fact that the, depth of, that the depth of A along C was at least D implies that the depth of A inf of A is at least D plus one. And, and in fact, so how, how, is this, how is this relevant? I mean, so uh, let's see. What, what we need is the vanishing of this left of this left hand side in cohomological degrees less than d. So same for the right hand side. So we want the vanishing in cohomological degrees less than d of this r gamma z a inf a inf of a m of g, and then and then Fersheibung invariance on everything, but we can get rid of that because of the because of the fiber sequence, which re, which re, realizes this as a mapping fiber of Fersheibung minus one of all the same thing. So if we if we manage to prove this vanishing, then it's then it's even better. But now we can resolve we can resolve M of G by projectives, finite projectives, using it that it's of uh, projective dimension uh, at most one. And so we can replace this M of G by, 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 okay, so we can use the resulting long zap cohomology sequence to replace the M of G by, by the PIs at the expense of needing to show this vanishing in, in one higher degree. And now the PIs, of course, are fine projective, so eventually we reduce just to, just to the inf itself by passing to direct summons and so on. And uh, now because because uh, the a inf was of depth at least d plus one along z, then we really get the vanishing in cohomological degrees less than, less than d plus one from that, from the key formula. Anyway, I'm more or less out of time, but so the, the upshot is that really the key point is to prove the key formula, I guess. And so how does one do that? So uh, the strategy roughly say, roughly, roughly say, roughly said is, is the following. First, we prove this in case of positive characteristic. Uh, I mean, using the, positive characteristic version of this classification. And positive characteristic is significantly simpler. It's related also to, to some uh, computations of uh, Kato and Trihan in their paper on BSD, for instance. Anyway, so first we do the positive characteristic case. Then we use this formula in positive characteristic case to prove 
a number of new, pro new properties for FPPF cohomology, such as with, with five flat group scheme coefficients, such as excision and agreement with FPQC cohomology, uh, and, and most importantly, p-complete arc descent for FPPF cohomology uh, of perfected rings. And then we use these new, we use these new properties to prove this key formula in the, in the mixed characteristic case. And, uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's a significant portion there to really, to really tell about, but I'm out of time, so I'll, uh, I'll just stop.